in every life a time where you've got to stand for what is true and if you can't stand for what is true don't call yourself a Christian am I my brother's keeper most certainly I'm my brother's keeper I have a responsibility lies deceit covering of sin a man that covers sin shall not prosper you won't prosper if you cover someone else's sin That is what the Bible teaches. All over the world today, there's the attitude that anything goes. Well, anything doesn't go. What God says is true, that's it. I find in life, people forget that. Our society is full of the idea that it doesn't matter anymore what you believe. It does matter what you believe. Now one of the ways that belief and faith are taken out of a person's heart is uh, shown in scripture. And if you go with me to, let's go to Colossians. No, let's go to Timothy first. Timothy. And I chose Cain with a very purposeful attitude. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, verse 19, Nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and that every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. That's what a Christian is. Flee also you for lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Now there's one thing you've got to avoid, foolish and unlearned questions. What you've got to avoid is arguing about things where there's no answer. I never bother. If someone says to me, I don't believe in the creation story, I won't even argue about it. It's foolishness. I know that when I was born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, I knew it was true. Up to that point, no one will believe it. That's the truth. When God met me, and the God of heaven and earth got inside me, I knew what he said was true. Until then, I just thought it was a story. That's the way it is. Do I argue about it? No. There are questions that just end up with strife, aren't there? And you've got ignoramuses all over the world that want to debate and argue about stupid things. I don't argue about it. It's not open to debate, it's not open to argument, as is the law of God. It's not open to debate, it's not open to argument. And, and once you start, and I, I read about Cain and Abel, people say, well, where did Cain get his wife? I don't care where Cain got his wife. And then they come up with all sorts of theories. Well, you know, there are other men and women on the earth. 
Well, I'm sorry, I don't believe that because, as I said, the whole of society came from Noah's family. If you believe the flood, and if you don't believe that, you don't believe God. And once you take one part of the Bible out, well, what part are you going to believe? Isn't that true? I'm a great, I'm a fundamentalist. I fundamentally believe scripture. Now, Cain and Abel, I want to tell you, Adam and Eve had many children, and they lived for a long time. Uh, Methuselah lived for a long, long time. I do not fancy living 900 years, uh, 960 years. Now, if you do, God bless you. Uh, if you want to, uh, you know, they say, well, did we all come from one seed? Yeah, we did. We're either the seed uh, uh, of Adam or we're the seed of Abraham, the seed of faith, aren't we? Hmm? That's what we are. I don't have any problem with that. Now, arguing about it and reasoning about it lend up in unbelief. Do I have an answer for every question? No. Do I want to have an answer? No. I meet all sorts of people. I'll tell you what I do. I don't even get into discussions with them on things where you just strive. No point. My Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And if someone doesn't believe that God is, don't even waste your time talking to them. Because if someone denies the existence of God, you're never going to um, bring them to life because my Bible says quite clearly, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If someone wants to come to God, that's the first ingredient they have to have. They have to believe in him. Okay? Uh, and if you find someone, oh, I don't believe God exists, fine. I don't even debate it. It's not open to debate. 1 Peter chapter 3. Look at this. 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm only telling you what the Bible says. I find there's people, you, you will reap what you sow. In your family, if you sow the wrong things in your children, you'll reap it. I'll tell you this, make no mistake, if you sow questioning and unbelief in your family over stupid things, you're going to reap a harvest as sure as night follows day. If you sow in your life questions, you're going to reap a harvest. Sow good seed. Whatsoever things are pure, just, and of good report, think on those things. Is that not right? You start thinking on all sorts of things. Where did Cain... I couldn't give a monkey's wrench where Cain got his wife. Does a monkey ever use a wrench? One asks. No, avoid foolish questions. However, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh. Okay, look up, look at me. You've got to be ready to give every man an answer. Does it say that? Every man, an answer. But then it qualifies it. And here's the qualification. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. That's what you answer to. A reason for the hope that is in you. What you don't do is answer every question. I don't need to have an answer for every question because I know in part, I prophesy in part, but I can give a reason for the answer for the hope that's in me. And so can you, if so be you're born again, can't you? Hmm? See, there's a lot of Christians want to answer every question. You're not God. There's a lot of things I don't know. There's a lot of things I would suggest you don't know. Is that fair? Hmm? Now once you go into this realm where you think you know everything, you're in trouble. But you can answer for the hope that's in you, can't you? Give a, an answer for that. Now that's all God asks us to do. Paul, when he wrote, he said, 
uh, Peter rather, when he wrote, said, look, you've got to be able to give an answer for the hope that's in you. Don't ever get onto the issues of religion and trying to answer everything else because there are no answers to a lot of questions and you end up just striving. See, I know the reason for the hope that's in me. God's met me. God changed me inside. He transformed my life inside. He dealt with the inward things. It's not doing to do with reason. It's to do with reality. And then once you get into the mind realm, you go into ignorance. I believe in education. I believe everyone should have a good education. But education won't bring you to Christ. It'll take you away from him. Really will. Do you, does that mean you avoid education? Not at all. But you know what education is. It's partial truth. Hey, the truth is Jesus. Without him, we have nothing. In him, everything's true. And that's the whole purpose in our life, you see. What you don't do is mix up the two things. You don't try and by your mind reason beliefs because if you do that you're a fool because the natural man cannot comprehend the things of the spirit it says in Corinthians for they're spiritually discerned neither can he know them by your natural mind you'll never know what God says I find a lot of people try they think because they've got an intellect they can argue they can reason you're a fool If you try and win people to God, Christ through that, you're a fool. You've got to have an answer for the hope that's in you. That's all. That's simple, isn't it? I know what God did for me. Can't argue with that. I know God healed me. I know God delivered me. I know God changed my life. <laughs> what are they going to say? They can only say you're a liar. They might say you're mad, but the fact is that your answer is always what God's done for me. You give an answer for the hope that's in you. Have you got that clear? Now I, I find a lot of young people, they end up at university and make blithering idiots of themselves because they go there and they start thinking their intellect is an answer. It isn't. What man by thinking can add one cubit to his stature? You won't improve yourself by thinking. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 6 says this, As you have there, therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There is what's called in society today the postmodernist thinking. Modernist thinking, postmodernist thinking. I don't want to go into it, I can't uh, go into it, but there's a lot of idea that you can poo poo the ideas of religion with reason. And now they go and they say, well, there's no absolute, no absolute truth. And so they come against the word of God and they have their traditions and they say, well, you know, God made men and, uh, and it says, you know, in Romans uh, that men burn in their lust one towards another, filthy, perverse, evil, says God. Um, Paul was writing uh, to the, epi the epistle to the Romans to a, a, a society that had become totally debased with homosexuality. And he said, look, they've given up reason. They've given up natural things for unnatural things. Hey, but our society today, people are going and they're claiming things. Let me tell you something. You don't get involved in what God doesn't sanction. Is that plain? What God says is right and that's it. 
See, my Bible says, cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Take your cares onto your own shoulders. Take the weight of things, you know. Oh, I've got a burden from the Lord. I haven't got any burdens. Hey, God's got to fix things. When I see someone who's sick, I know God's the miracle worker, not me. It's his responsibility, not mine. When I start taking the responsibility onto myself, trouble. You can always look, but people, when, when something goes wrong in people's lives, they look at their past and they wonder if it could have been different. Probably could have been. But if you look back in your life and you start regretting everything in your life, is it going to change anything? All it'll do is make you miserable. If only I'd done this, if only I'd done that, if only I... And in the end, you don't do anything with your life because you live with regrets. Paul says, the thing to do in life is to forget the things that are behind. Have you noticed, people that walk along looking backwards end up banging into lampposts. Have you ever seen someone walk into a lamppost? Or drop down a hole? I mean, it's stupid to do it, isn't it? They're talking, bang! And you want to watch where you're going, don't you, in life? If you're always looking backwards, you never find anything, do you? I find a lot of people, hey, did you make mistakes in the past? Sure you did. Are you going to make mistakes in the future? Probably. But we have a God who's good. Hmm? He forgives us for our mistakes of the past. We might have a funny shaped nose because of the lamppost we hit. But we're going on in life, aren't we? Hmm? And the thing to do is not to live with regrets. Do I regret what people do? No. In the end, everyone's got a free will. Everyone's going to make their own choices in life. Am I sad? No. I'm not going to let the devil take my joy from me because of other people's actions. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to get me so involved with someone else's life, so miserable about it, that I lose my joy. Thank you very much. The joy of the Lord is mine. I'm going to keep it. Do I grieve over other people? No! I'm not going to. Why? I made a decision to be happy. Why? Because happy people live longer. And miserable people get bitter. Can I explain it? No. I'm just happy. I find a lot of parents grieve over their kids. You could end up grieving over your kid. You lose your Christian faith. Christian faith is full of joy. Hmm? Grow up. Are you your brother's keeper? Most certainly you are. It says you're to admonish, you're to warn. But in the end, everyone's going to make their own choices in life. In the end, you can't compel someone to do what they don't want to do. What you do is, in their young days, you, you put a wall around them. I've got grandchildren. I don't want them to run in the road. Why? Because cars come along, and I don't want them to become marmalade. Uh, you know, squash. You, you want to protect them, don't you? I protected my family. They're grown up. My three kids are grown. But I know this in the end, they've got free will. And if they try and use it too much, they'll be in trouble. There are certain principles in God that are there, and they're going to live by them. End of story. I believe in that. That's my faith, that's my belief. Abraham blessed his children. You know, there's a tremendous blessing of a father upon his children. Always. As part of the kingdom of God. Jesus always did what his father said. Respect for fatherhood. That's the way it is. I believe in it. I'm just a believer. But I don't want to debate it. If someone comes along to me and wants to debate this, I, I, there's no debate. 
I'm not going to listen to the traditions of modern society because I, I'm not interested in modern society. I'm interested in God. See, I've got a reason for the hope that's in me. My hope's in my God. I'm not interested in what modern society says. Modern society can go hang. Look what a mess it's making of everyone's life. Amen? Look at the filth. I, I don't, uh, frankly, I, I'm not interested in their traditions at all. My tradition is God. My faith is God. I've got a reason for Do you understand that? That's why I'm happy. I'm happy because my God is good all the time. Now, if people want to violate that, that's their choice. But they're not going to rob me of my happiness. I'll never lose my happiness because of them. Aren't you going to be sad? No, I'm not. I choose not to be. Well, don't you grieve? No. I won't. Because if I grieve, I end up condoning what they do. Say, so, well, how does that condone what they do? Well, because my joy is in my God. My joy isn't in other people. There's a lot of philosophy today where you've got to be happy in other people. Don't, don't live your life through other people. Live your life through God and relate to other people. Ezekiel chapter 3, and it says, As it came to pass in verse 16, at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me. Have you got it? saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his, wicked, in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Hey! It says it in the Bible. You have a responsibility. Do you realize that you're going to be required to answer for the soul that you fail to warn? Is that what it says? I have a responsibility. I can't just wash my hands and say, well, it's up to them what they do. No. No, sir, no, sir, no, sir, it is not. And don't you think that covering sin and allowing people, if you mix with the wrong people, you're going to end up going the wrong way. But I'll tell you this, I said to my my kids, I said, you make sure you don't make friends with the wrong people. Birds of the feather flock together. Make the wrong friends, consort with the wrong people, you end up in trouble. Proverbs warns, you don't make friends with unrighteousness. You love the household of faith. And the household of faith doesn't mean everyone that calls themselves a Christian is of the household of faith. People who live right. 
lived that way. My kids went through university, came out the other side. It never affected them. They never got involved. Why they were taught. Why I knew that it was my responsibility. Never would I let them make friends with the wrong people. I was choosy who came to the house to stay. I was choosy all through their lives. Why? Because I love them. Say, well, that's sheltering them. You better believe it. I didn't want my children to catch typhoid. I didn't say get immune by going and swimming in a sewer. Don't do it. You spend your time watching the television, you watch all the wrong programs, you're going to end up in trouble. If your kids watch them, they'll end up in trouble. It affects you, gets in your mind. If you spend all your time with the wrong company, I'll tell you what happened. That's why you have churches. Is it brainwashing? No. It's heartwarming. It's nice to have fellowship with decent people, isn't it? Hmm? It's nice to have... I, I don't want to argue about filth. I don't know. It's vain philosophies, traditions of men. I'm not interested. I know the way I want to live. I would know the way my children want to live. Hey, I want them to go on in the fear and admonition of God. I want them to... They've grown up. I can prove it works because look at my three children. They came out clean. I laid down a law. I believe in it. Why? Because it's important. Hey, life's important, isn't it? You don't want any soul to die, do you? But worse than that, you don't want to have their blood upon your hands, do you? Well, do you? You have a responsibility to speak out. Say, look, that's wrong. Just look at it. Am I my brother's keeper? 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 God's going to require their soul at your hand. The blood speaks out. Tremendous responsibility we have. Hmm? Can't just let things go. Whatsoever things are pure, just, and a good report, think on those things. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise. Eh? <laughs> you know, you young people, you mark my words. You play with sin, you're going to be destroyed. You mess with things. You parents, it's time you woke up. Time you said, hey, I'm responsible. God puts it this way. I'll read it again. God puts it this way. This is why society is falling apart, because parents don't realize. Verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. Hey, you're responsible for saving a man's life. Don't you say, ah, oh, but he's got to make his own choice. God didn't say that. He says if you don't warn them, you know, the word of God's clear, isn't it? Well, is it right or wrong? Now, it doesn't mean everyone's going to turn, but you warned him.
The same wicked man, verse 18, shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Glory to God. Amen. What I'm concerned about in my life is I just want to keep my soul free. I'm concerned when the wicked go into the wrong thing. But I tell you, I want to tell them to turn. Why? Because I know if I don't tell them to turn, God's going to require their, the, the, his blood at my hand. I don't like that. Do you? Hmm? Got to say, hey, come on. Our children need help. Got to warn them. We're here as a watchman. In your home, you're the watchman for your children. You've got a responsibility. If I see a man going into wickedness, I've got to tell him, it's time to turn. No good saying, well, someone else will do it, or it's not my responsibility. It's my responsibility. Now, if he doesn't turn, that's not my responsibility. I'm not going to get all emotionally involved. Do you know, if I get sorry for someone who's gone into sin, I'm actually going to end up hating God. I find a lot of people, they end up letting their emotions get tangled up. If someone chooses to go into iniquity to live against God, I'm not going to let my grief get hold of me. Hey, they chose it. Thank you very much, but I'm going God's way. I'm happy. Do you understand that? You've got to keep your heart. Otherwise, that, that's why Christians get so messed up, because they think that by showing what they call love, they'll win the sinner back. You won't win the sinner back. They'll take you down. They'll drag you down. As far as I'm concerned, if you choose to go the wrong way, it says don't keep company with a person who's going to go the wrong way, who chooses to go the wrong way. Watch out. There are people who just choose to go the wrong way. All right? Am I my brother's keeper? You better believe it. Got to warn him, haven't I? Hmm? Don't any of you parents, don't ever let me hear you say, well, it's none of my business. It is your business. If they're your brother, you have a responsibility to them. If they're your sister, you have a responsibility to them. If a man be overtaken in a fault, let them that are spiritual go and restore such a one. Doesn't mean that you get all judgmental. You restore. But the fact is, you should have warned them. I like good company. I don't need bad friends. I like good friends. I like to spend my time with people I can enjoy. Don't you? Hmm? Well, don't you? You know, people who are going to lift me up in God. People who are going to... I don't want to spend time with filth. Say, well, that's the way to win them. It isn't. Say, well, Jesus spent all his time with wine, wine bibbers and gluttons. No, he didn't. He spent his time with people that had no hope. He left the religious people. He went to the people that had no hope, who gladly heard him. They heard him. He didn't hear them. They heard him. And make, make no mistake about it, when someone wants you to hear them, forget it. That's not the type of person to spend time. I, I, I find a lot of people who aren't Christians who want to hear the gospel. They want to hear good news. They want to hear hope. Those are the type of people, but I'm not going to go and argue with the people who just want to argue for their lifestyle. Forget it. They don't want to hear. I look for the people who are open, whose God's spirit is moving upon. The rest, well, they can go hang. 
That's why when you have a meeting, you invite people along to a meeting, people will never come to a meeting. Well, don't think that you're going to win them by going and befriending them. You won't win them that way. They'll destroy you. Do you understand me? Hmm? Compromise never wins. I'm not going to make friends with people who, who want to go the wrong way. Whatsoever things are pure, just, and a good report, think on these things. Amen? Is that the right in Scripture? Do you believe it? Am I my brother's keeper? Have I a responsibility? I do. Right.